Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do day one of the 12 days of Christmas candles, a new series in which together we will explore a mix of returning classics and new favorites across a variety of brands, price points, and fragrance families, all appropriate for buying and burning during and beyond the holiday season. There will be a new Days of Christmas video every other day now through Christmas Eve, and they'll be appearing in no particular order, so stay tuned to see if your favorite candle is on the calendar. The candle I'm featuring today for day one is the Nest New York Crystallized Ginger and Vanilla Bean Candle, so throw on your Kelly Clarkson record, either of her two amazing Christmas records, my favorite of all time, and get yourself a glass of eggnog or some other festive beverage, and we'll dig into this holiday festive gourmand. So you may have seen I've done a handful of Nest reviews in the past. You can check out my Nest playlist here for past reviews, and I'm really excited to dig into this one today. I've actually had this for a couple of months at this point. This is their new fragrance for this holiday season, coming back alongside their holiday Birchwood Pine Hearth, those real classics that are, you know, pretty much the standards you're going to see every year. These, they tend to throw a new one into the mix some years. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. This one, I think, will be quite popular. And I could see it becoming a gourmand that ends up living within the core collection because though it is festive, it doesn't scream just holiday. I think there could be a place for it year-round. So I'll read you the scent story for this. I will give you my overall kind of assessment what I think of the candle, dig into the notes. They just list three here, so it won't be super long. Dig into the three notes, explore what they are meant to smell like in fine fragrance, kind of see what I get from this candle, how the notes work together, how it is blended, talk a bit about the performance, the strength, the throw, the projection, the wick, the wax, all that good stuff, and we'll be on our merry way. So the fragrance story for this is the heartwarming notes of crystallized ginger, cinnamon, and vanilla bean create an irresistible gourmand fragrance that captures the rich aromas reminiscent of the holiday season. This is your traditional 8.1 ounce classic single wick nest candle. Now their packaging really is beautiful. This is, I mean, year round they have beautiful packaging, but especially for holiday. This is embossed, there's a texture to it, there is some metallic leaf in here, just a very pretty, sophisticated box, and then complimentary vessel inside. So let's dig into it. I have burned this a fair number of times. In fact, I'm probably, I don't know, a quarter to a third of the way through, as you can see a beautiful clean burn, as is pretty common with Nest. Again, the notes on this, they just give us three. I would love to hear four, five, six, you know that all of the fragrances within Nest's portfolio are really fine home fragrances with a classic, you know, perfumer's build of top, middle, bottom notes that really play off each other to evoke a mood, a memory, a space, a place, a time, uh, an, a botanical item, a vibe. And so only hearing through the notes is disappointing just because I, as, as someone who really wants to dig into it like it's a fine wine, I want to know more, but we'll just have to depend on our noses to see what else is in there besides the three notes that they give us. Uh, they do sometimes tell you more in other fragrances, but with this one, they're saying here the three primary notes, enjoy. So we will do that. <laughs> but to give you the overall assessment, this is a strong candle, even just, you know, whipping it around here. It, it really is throwing a beautiful scent right up right up into my nose here. This is, I think, this is referred to as a festive gourmand is what they call it. Now keep in mind, gourmand, some people think means bakery. Now I would say sort of all bakery fragrances fall under gourmand, but not all gourmand are bakery. So bakery is sort of, let's call it a subcategory in gourmand. So it's not necessarily going to be food edible for, for all gourmand candles, which I would say this is in that festive gourmand category without necessarily being fully edible, though there are things like ginger and vanilla bean in there, right? This is not a true bakery, which is a good thing, I think. It doesn't smell like something necessarily that you would eat, but perhaps a place where you may indulge and celebrate. It's bright, festive, warm, a bit spicy from the ginger, but really balanced with a soft sweetness. The cinnamon is non-traditional and that it kind of hangs in the background. You see cinnamon, a lot of folks see cinnamon, a top three note in the candle, and they are going to think, oh, this is going to be spicy red hots, or just even if it's not the red hot cinnamon, it's still going to be strong because cinnamon really is a dominant note. And here they they found a way to really pull it back. It hangs in the background to add just almost a, a, a bit of like a citrus floral edge to it, coming from like a true cinnamon. Those undertones to the spice of the uplifting candied ginger. It's round, 
rich, but not heavy or overwhelming, like you think it, it, something like the, this fragrance could be. Vanilla, which we all know what it typically smells like, leans almost a tad boozy with its comforting warmth. A, a bit sensual, almost with a bit of a floral or maybe musky edge to it, just the slightest hint. As a background note, not something that's prominent. And I really think that this combination and expression of those notes breaks it out of being your traditional gourmand or bakery fragrance. So it really is somewhat, you know, it's, it's addictive. It is not what I initially expected it to be when I saw a crystallized ginger, cinnamon, and vanilla. I thought spicy, very traditional gourmand Christmas with ginger can kind of lean a couple of different ways, just spicy and, and strong or candied or foodie or, you know, gingerbread almost. And this really doesn't fit in the mold of any of those expectations in a really nice way. So let's dig into the notes themselves. So ginger, of course, is that root. It is going to be bracing and uplifting, warm, spicy, almost kind of like nose tingling pepperiness, but still sweet, borderline kind of like a woody citrus angle to it. Peppery heat can be pungent, warm, sometimes leaning that lemony or camphorous direction, though this is a candied ginger. So it is gonna be bright and pungent and a little bit spicy and peppery, but it is candied, meaning it is dried and coated in sugar crystals. So there is that rich, you know, almost dried fruit, though it's not a fruit, that sort of dried candied aspect that really makes it indulgent. Cinnamon, of course, it is a key smell of Christmas. It is warm, a dry, spicy, powdery, sweet freshness right from the start. Spicy, enticing. I love cinnamon. I, I am a huge fan of cinnamon and foods and, and fragrance. Very comforting and sweet. The interesting thing, and I've said this in other videos, so this may not be new to you, is there really are two families of cinnamon. So there is your true cinnamon, your Ceylon cinnamon, which is sometimes referred to as Mexican cinnamon or Sri Lankan cinnamon, as that is where it originated. And that is gonna be sort of complex, fragrant, a bit of a citrus overtone, soft, powdery, really nuanced. Not as strong, you know, not those red hots, big red type of pungent spicy cinnamon. Not a whole lot of bite to it. Soft, but still unmistakably cinnamon. That's the sort of soft cinnamon that you see rolled up where it's mul multiple little layers rolled together. Then you have your cassia cinnamon, sometimes referred to as Chinese or Vietnamese, Saigon or Indonesian cinnamon, which is not a true cinnamon as the Ceylon is, and it is pungent, it is spicy. It's actually said to be less healthy for you than the Ceylon, uh, but it is still, of course, very widely used. And that's a little bit more direct, blunt, to the front of the line, cinnamon, straightforward, this is what it is, whereas you've got Ceylon is more nuanced. Hard to say exactly what this is because the cinnamon really sits in the background, but that's okay. I would lean toward probably more like the Ceylon, especially when I'm getting some of that sort of floral citrusy background in here that is just enough that it's there. Don't know that it is its own note, though it could be a, a musk or a bit of a floral, or if it's playing off of some of the floral citrus notes that you can get from a ginger or from a Ceylon cinnamon. And then finally, vanilla. I mean, what can be said about vanilla? I, there are, are sure, I'm sure there are documentaries on vanilla itself, but it is sweet, warm, comforting. It can be kind of heady. It can, a, a true non-imitation vanilla can be a little bit earthy, kind of boozy, a bit spicy. It can be part of literal edible gourmands when you're thinking of a vanilla macaron that is an edible baked good. It can be a mature, sensual, rich floral. And this vanilla sits right in that line of a fine fragrance, beautiful, authentic vanilla that just truly is the base of this candle. It fixes it all together and you've got the burst of the, the candied ginger, the nuances of the, what I'm gonna say, Ceylon cinnamon dancing throughout, the base of that vanilla holding it together and bringing that true gourmand to this. And there's gotta be something else in there. Again, I don't know if it's that tiniest hint of musk or a bit of a citrus or floral playing in the background there, or almost like a citrus flower perhaps. Though that sounds weird, I could see it in here and I can also see why they might not include that in the marketing because that might throw people thinking that this is overly floral or spring-like or 
or too powdery perfume, and it is none of those things. It really is a true festive gourmand. I would almost say like a, you know, a champagne sort of fruity floral to it to really add that festive brightness to this without it being, you know, effervescent. So the more I sniff it, the more I like it. I've burned through this. This one certainly, again, could be a year-round gourmand. It is festive, but it doesn't scream holiday, but it is very appropriate at the holiday time. So that's where this one is a winner for folks, again, who want to gourmand, but also say, oh, I don't want a baked good. I don't want vanilla pumpkin marshmallow. That's fine. I think there's a time and a place for all that. That said, this is gonna be the type of gourmand for those folks. And I think others who actually do want some of the, the edible foodies, because this is just a, a warm, rich sweetness that I think you can't go wrong with it. So as far as the performance, really healthy, strong performance. Again, with many single wick luxury candles, sometimes you have to start with a little bit of foil at the top, just because, especially with this vessel, it is wider at the top. So it takes a little bit longer with this kind of supposedly coconut soy blend. It's a proprietary blend. It was once said to be coconut based, but they now say it is proprietary and, and they don't say exactly the ingredients. So, but let's assume that perhaps it is a coconut soy vegetable blend of some sort. It is fairly viscous. It takes a while to pull out, but it does pull out and it, it has a really healthy, as you can see, very, very clean burn. There's very little drag on this. And as it gets further down, there is less need for any sort of performance enhancers uh, in the way of a foil sleeve because the actual width does taper so it is easier for it to pull out with each subsequent burn. This really can throw pretty healthy, even with a single wick, in a bedroom or in a sort of medium space. Great in a powder room, certainly good in the kitchen. Even if you are baking, add this gourmand on top of the actual cooking going on. Absolutely could fit in there. And I've been very pleased with the, the strength, the throw, and the projection, which is usually the case with Nest, uh, at least my experience with Nest. So I really do recommend this one if you are into Nest, if you want to try Nest and you're not really sure what area to go in and you want something a little bit different than their traditional holiday fragrances, go for this, this ginger gourmand, the festive gourmand. I do think that you'll be pleased, especially if you are a vanilla lover, because this is a tried and true vanilla based candle for me. So that is it for today. Be sure to stay tuned for day two of the 12 days of candles. Let me know what you think about this, what you're hoping to see, what candles you think might appear in here. Be sure to stay tuned. We've got Bath & Body Works, Homeworks, Lofco, Boy Smells, PF Candle Company, Harlem Candle Company, a whole variety of brands that I'm really excited to talk about across this these holiday Christmas candles. And until next time, take care.